Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we are looking at a data set of prescription drugs uh, taken by subjects who uh, were tested on their memory. Uh, so and I think it might be a, uh, a synthetic data set. It says the participants were done on novel islanders who mimic real life humans. So I'm not sure what that means. I'm guessing this is not real life experiment. Um, but Either way, we'll do the pre-processing and training on this data set. So we have three drugs, alprazolam, triazolam, and a placebo, uh, labeled as A, T, and S. And we have that uh, column right here, not uh, here, uh, type of drug administered. And we're going to try to predict the type of drug based on their performance on this memory, uh, memory test. So let's hop into the notebook. Um, I'm going to import NumPy and Pandas for working with the data. For pre-processing, we'll use the train test split function and standard scalar from sklearn. And then these are all of our classifiers. We'll be using logistic regression, k-nearest neighbors, decision tree, two support vector machines, a neural network, uh, and then all of our ensemble classifiers, which is random forest, gradient boosting, xgboost, lightgbm, and catboost. So let's go ahead and import all of that, and I'll load in the data using pandas.readcsv. We'll grab the file path up here, paste that in, and we can take a look. So it's a very small data set, only 200 rows, um, so I'm not sure how uh, good of a performance we'll get. There's very little data. We also only have nine columns, but you can see some of them are categorical, so we're going to do some encoding. I don't think we'll be doing any uh, missing value imputation today. Uh, and yeah, there's no missing values in the data set. So let's start pre-processing. I'm going to create a function called preprocess inputs. Uh, and this is going to take in a data frame, make a copy of the data frame, and then return it. So right now, all this is doing is copying over our data frame. And this is allowing us to perform the pre-processing on a fresh copy so that we don't modify the original. All right, so just looking at it, um, it's a very simple data set, so you can sort of just figure out everything we're going to have to do. We're going to need some one-hot encoding, uh, probably some binary encoding for this one. It looks like there's only two values in it, happy and sad. Uh, and then everything else is numerical. So whether we want to one-hot encode the first and last name is sort of up to us. Technically, this shouldn't matter. We shouldn't be using someone's first and last name as a measure of what drug they took. It doesn't really make sense. Uh, but, but since we are sort of uh, strapped for features here, we only have nine columns, I'm going to use it anyway. Um, I doubt there's very much useful information in those columns though. Alright, so let us start this way. I'm going to create a dictionary. It's going to map the name of a column to the number of unique values in the column. So we'll take the length of data I'll use x instead, x sub column dot unique. That will give us a list of unique values, and we take the length to get the number of unique values. And we're going to do that for every column in x dot columns. So we can see how many values are in each one. Now I'll notice we have 198 rows, and we don't have the maximum number of uh, unique first names. So maybe one hot encoding it will give us some sort of information, but I, again, I think it'll probably be very little. Last name, maybe a little more information, since there's there's 18 values now. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's some relation. Uh, whatever. Then we have age, which is numeric, so we don't have to worry about that. The happy sad group, this is two values, so that's binary encoding. And then we have dosage, which is numeric as well. It has one, two, or three depending on the dosage. So you can consider that ordinal, categorical maybe. Um, and then drug. This is not going to be encoded because that's our classification, our, our label column. So we'll leave that as it is. The, and the last three are numeric. So we really only have the happy sad group to encode as binary and the first and last name to one hot encode. And I'm actually going to do something today. I'm going to create I'm gonna, the one hot encode function, but I'm going to build in capabilities for binary encoding right into it. So we'll, this will take in a data frame and a column, and we'll start by creating a copy of the data frame. So the, the aim of this function is to encode whichever column we pass in. 
So we're always going to create some dummies with pandas get dummies. And let's take a look at that. Uh, if we use pandas get dummies to check the dummies for, let's say, um, first name, or I'll do last name. If I put last name in here, uh, this should be x sub last name, like that. Each last name now gets its own column, and a one refers to the original value of that example. Uh, all the rest will be zeros. Now, if we do this for a binary column, uh, which is happy sad group, uh, you'll see they're actually mirrors of each other. They're reflections. So this is redundant to have them both here. Um, however, if we drop one of these columns, we're actually left with a binary encoding of the column. So what we could do is just drop uh, the first the first column of this data frame uh, to get a binary encoding. So that's what I'll do in our function. I'll create the dummies. I'll also note that we can um, include a prefix. Call it happy sad maybe. And that will just put happy sad at the beginning of each column so that we know where the columns are coming from. So I'll make the prefix equal to the column name. And then once we create the dummies, if the length of unique values Uh, in the column is 2. So if it's a binary column, then we will drop the first column from axis 1. So this is uh, the equivalently, uh, it's equivalent to binary encoding. Uh, maybe it's a little lazy, I don't know. It's going to get the job done. Um, it will change the column name and it will put the column onto the end of the data frame. But if you have a lot of columns and you don't want to sort out which are binary, which are uh, nominal, uh, so you can use this function to take care of both binaries and one hots in one go. All right, so after we have that, um, we're going to take the, the dummies and put them onto the end of a data frame. So df equals pandas, duck, and cat. df and dummies uh, along axis 1, which is side by side. After that, we can drop the original column from which we created the dummies and return df. That will be our function. Let me just indent these a little uh, so we can see what's going on here. All right, and now in our preprocess input function, we're going to call this function uh, that we just created on all of the columns we need. So one hot encode categorical features. Technically, the binary feature is categorical. For every column in, and this is where we specify which ones we want to uh, one-hot encode, we'll do first name, last name, and happy sad group, and that's the one that will be binary encoded. Uh, then we'll just call uh, one-hot encode, uh, passing in df, and our column will be column. And here we go. We now have 164 columns. Um, these are our original features. And then we have all the one hots over here, the first names, then the last names. And then at the end, we just have a single happy sad group column uh, where it dropped the happy one and just kept the sad. So this is a binary encoding of the original column. All right, and everything's numeric except for our labels. That's OK, though. So now let's split the data. Y is going to be what we're trying to predict. So that's drug column. And x is all the rest of the data. So we'll drop drug from axis 1. And then we'll do our train test split. So x train, x test, y train, and y test. Uh, we'll get these from the train test split function from sklearn. We're going to pass in x and y, specify a size of our train set. Uh, let's do 70%. And we'll keep shuffle equals true on and include a random state so that we can reproduce the results of the shuffle and the split. All right, so we get this. Um, actually, instead of returning df, I want to return these four values and get them back over here. And then we'll take a look at x train. So we no longer have the drug column, and this is only 70% of the data. Uh, the only thing we have to do now is scale the data. So all the columns take on different ranges of values right now. We want to standardize them so that they all take the same range. So we'll do a shift and a scale to each column uh, to give every column a mean of 0 and a variance of 1.
And for that, we can use a standard scaler from sklearn. Uh, so we'll fit the scaler, uh, scaler.fit, adjust to the train set. So, and so we want to pretend we don't have access to the test set when we're doing this pre-processing. And then we'll transform both xtrain and xtest using that fit. Now, I want to point out that scalar.transform returns a numpy array, so I'm going to turn it back into a data frame afterwards. And since we're reconstructing the data frame, I'm going to tell it that the indices should stay as they were, and the column names should stay as they were. And then we'll copy that over and do the same thing for x test. All right, so now the data's been scaled. Um, if we look at the means and the variances, you see the means are all very close to zero, and the variances are all very close to one. All right. So now I think we're ready to train. Let's take a look at the value counts of y. So this is our class distribution. And it's a pretty even class distribution, so maybe we'll be OK. I don't know. We really don't have much data, though. All right, now training. Um, so we imported a lot of different models. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to paste in this dictionary that maps uh, the name of each model to its uh, the instance of that model. So this is what we're going to fit, and then we'll use the name to display like metrics about each model. So again, we have a logistic regression classifier, k nearest neighbors classifier, decision tree, uh, support vector machine with a linear kernel, support vector machine with a nonlinear kernel, uh, neural network, random forest, gradient boosting, XGBoost, LightGBM, and CatBoost. So what's nice about having a dictionary like this is we can then say for every name and model in models.items. So dot items will return the key value pairs as tuples. We can get them back two at a time like this. Uh, and then we'll just take each model and fit it on the train set. After that, we can print out the name of the model followed by a confirmation message that says trained. So that we can just see that when each one trains. All right, it's done. Really not much data to train on. Uh, now we'll print the results. So for name and model in models.items. We'll just print out the name of the model, followed by, uh, we want to display the accuracy value on the test set. So I'll display this accuracy value to two, two decimal places and as a percentage, and then format this with model.score. So uh, model.score, when we're doing classifiers, will return the accuracy value on the test set or whatever set you pass in here. So I'm going to pass in x test, y test. And I'm going to multiply this by 100 since it's a percentage. All right, and there it is. Um, so not so great. Uh, the best we got here was with gradient boosting with a 50% accuracy. So not, not amazing, right? Uh, but again, we don't have much data, so we can't really blame it. Um, it looks like our simpler models did not do so well. Actually, uh, it's interesting to see that two of our ensembles did not do very well. XGBoost and LightGBM didn't do well, whereas CatBoost uh, and Gradient Boosting did uh, much better. Yeah, it looks like Random Forest didn't do as well either. Uh, Neural Network did okay. Decision Tree did okay. And then uh, the worst one here was our K nearest neighbors. All right, so uh, this was just a quick video to show you how to set up the the pre-processing and the model, and then also to show you that function where we can do the binary encoding and the one-hot uh, encoding together. So that was some today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content, and leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.